right, Josh, here you go. I'll do the best. This is the first time recording myself, so I'll do the best I can. Uh, I'll peek over here and read some of your questions here from time to time. But uh, the first question is, what inspired uh, you to get into coaching? Um, you know, for me, it was really, um, it's what I'd been. I mean, in high school, I was a, a, actually a four-sport athlete. Uh, football wasn't even my favorite sport. Whatever sport I happened to be in at the time was my favorite. So I just went from football to basketball to track to baseball and enjoyed them all and had good experiences. Uh, had Actually, I had great experiences out of all of them. And when I came here to then Northeast Missouri State in 76, uh, continued uh, obviously in football and uh, uh, was blessed to have you know, great relationships, all those types of things. Another great experience in addition to intramurals were really kicking at that time. So when you reduce clutter, um, I wanted young people to have some of the same, what I perceived to be great experiences that I felt like I'd been afforded. And just as, or even more importantly, an opportunity to learn and, and uh, through education. I, you know, I felt like athletics was, uh, I've never seen things as extracurricular, but co-curricular. Uh, I think everything's important. I came here as a, a walk-on in football, but I had a full tuition academic scholarship, so certainly felt like uh, academics in the classroom are what we're in college for, but a big piece of that for a lot of us is what we've learned off the outside of the classroom, on the field, in the band room, chorus, drama, whatever it may be that floats our boat and gets us excited. So it's, it's what I've been, and I just really wanted kids to have some of the same opportunities that I had. Uh, my path from getting started in coaching to uh, present day, uh, I uh, started off as a junior high football, basketball, and track coach in 1980. Uh, moved up to high school football in 81. Moved up to freshman basketball and, and head junior high track coach uh, in 81 as well. Uh, 82 and 83, I moved up to the varsity level in basketball. And then 84, became a head football coach. And at that time, I dropped basketball. I also became head women's track coach uh, at, at that same point in time, I think 84. Uh, as well in Hannibal uh, before becoming an AD in 89. Uh, left uh, high school athletics for three years and came here. Uh, still then, Northeast Missouri State was my second stint and, and was an assistant coach here for Eric Holm uh, through 90, 91, and 92 seasons for three years. Prior to going back to high school, uh, Hickman High School in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, had a great experience, spent 14, 15 years there uh, with my family, raised our children there, and retired from public ed in 2006 with uh, 25 years in Missouri public education, and went over to uh, University of Central Missouri, uh, uh, a rival at that time uh, with uh, Coach Willie Fritz, um, who befriended me and is now the head coach at Tulane. So he's went on to do great things and, and certainly move up the ladder from a coaching perspective, but uh, called his defense and worked with Willie for three years before having an opportunity to come home here in 2010 uh, as a head football coach. Favorite uh, memory in college sports or players a coach, uh, really when you've done it as long as I have, uh, there's just too, too many, too numerous to mention. So there's, there's several and I'll just leave it at that so we don't offend folks with that question. And uh, what one lesson sticks out from my time in coaching thus far? As I'm taping this, uh, I'm uh, beginning my 41st year uh, in coaching, uh, in education. Uh, my 16th here at the NCAA Division II level. So the thing that strikes me, uh, the, the biggest uh, lesson would be how quickly it's went how quick 40 years can go. And for young people, uh, people of all ages, you think uh, uh, you don't really purchase that till you're sitting at 62 years old. And, and certainly you've got more sand in the bottom of an hourglass from a career standpoint than you have in the, in the upper half. So it goes very, very quickly. Uh, the, the time doesn't wait on any of us. It just keeps marching on. So that's the, the biggest lesson that I've taken through my career. Uh, if I weren't coaching, uh, I would be. I like helping folks. Believe it or not, I'd probably be in politics if, if you felt like you could really make a difference uh, with, uh, you know, certainly it's, uh, uh, we're in unprecedented times as we're sitting here taping this and, and seeing if, if uh, common sense could actually uh, 
and there's other very fine people very in politics who get a bad rap, but that's probably what I'd be doing if it wasn't from a, from a coaching perspective. And the last question that you have here is, was coaching at your alma mater your dream job? And I don't know if it was or wasn't, Josh. Uh, uh, certainly very, very special, an opportunity to uh, come back to where this really all started for me. Um, met my beautiful wife, Jackie, here in, in the fall of 79. Uh, she was a freshman. I kiddingly say she was a freshman when I was a senior, so she didn't know any better. Uh, as we're taping this in Pershing Building, uh, Grim Hall sits uh, about 40 yards from me and in my dorm room in, in 76 with college roommate Greg Williams and sweet mate Steve Rampey and Pete Grathwell, all male athletes at that time were in Grim Hall in the fall of 76. So uh, certainly it's been uh, uh, very, very special to come back to a place that uh, certainly afforded me and gave me the opportunity to get a start and get those early jobs and, and uh, have uh, a career, what I'd like to think has been impact, um, most of it positive uh, through the kids through the years. So hope that does it. Uh, be interesting with my camera work to see how this goes. We'll talk to you, Josh. See ya.